They're tiny, annoying, and they can carry deadly diseases. But mosquitoes can't buzz through the photonic fence. That's this week on Light Matters. This is Light Matters for October 29th, 2014. I'm James Lowe. On this week's show, we talk with the inventors of a laser-based approach to combating malaria. But first, Managing Editor Laura Marshall's conversation with Rice University spectroscopy and imaging professor Dr. Rebecca richards Cordum, and other highlights from Frontiers in Optics and iCalio. Thanks, James. Malaria is a serious problem in many low-resource settings. Another is the mortality rate for mothers and newborn babies, which was the focus of Dr. Rebecca richards Cordum's plenary lecture at OSA's Frontiers in Optics conference last week in Tucson. I think this really represents one of the very important frontiers where cost-effective technologies can make very dramatic contributions to improve outcomes for people. After the plenaries, Dr. richards Cordum and I sat down for a one-on-one -on -one interview about her work directing the Rice 360 program. That program aims to get undergrads involved in designing low-cost health technologies for low-resource communities and to increase access to life-saving technologies. As she explained, it's a win-win situation for students and healthcare providers. You, you have this, um, this great opportunity where you've got real problems that are compelling and undergraduates actually can make a difference in these settings. Um, and, and what we found, we started small, but um, we found that clinicians were actually very excited to see the solutions when the students were finished. And so it's one of those things where um, it's, it's that rare confluence when all of the constraints come together and you find you can actually get something that goes from idea to impact. She also described the usefulness of so-called failed projects in teaching and inspiring innovation. So I, I kind of thought this project was over, and, and I, in desperation, was recycling it for my freshman students. And for them to be able to hold this thing that nobody was too excited about, it actually was very inspirational, and they came up with a much better solution. But we've seen over and over again the inspirational value of these failed projects. Um, so I don't think of them as failures anymore. I think of them as that's how I'm going to motivate a team of students to come up with something that will really work. Dr. Richards Cordum and I also discussed in detail opportunities in optics, the importance of mentorship, and more. You can find the entire interview at photonics.com. Another highlight at Frontiers in Optics was a lecture by Dr. W. E. Murner, who just won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry for his work on super-resolution fluorescence microscopy. He treated the plenary attendees to an inside look at the history of single molecule imaging and the work that garnered him the prize. In the end, you get a bunch of coordinates of the positions of the molecule, and uh, you can put them together in a pointillist reconstruction of the underlying structure. So that's how this whole thing works, and it rests on the imaging, localization, and having some control mechanisms that, that keeps the molecule mostly off. Overall, about 1,400 people attended FIO to take advantage of the technical sessions, the exhibition, and other events. On next week's show, in an EDU spotlight, we'll cover the OSA student chapter competition for which participants had to design projects to teach kids about the nature of light. Meanwhile, the 33rd International Congress on Lasers and Electro-Optics, hosted by the Laser Institute of America, drew about 500 scholars and business people to San Diego. Among the roughly 40 presentations were talks on present and future industrial uses of lasers, from repairing landing gear to etching hydrogen fuel cells. Two speakers explored underwater laser cutting approaches for decommissioning nuclear power plants, in particular Japan's Fukushima Daiichi, which melted down in 2011. I caught up with longtime LIA Executive Director Peter Baker, who told me about watching laser-based 3D printing mature over decades of conferences. The early papers, I, I think, had to do with Professor Bill Steen from the UK uh, blowing metal powder down a straw while firing a laser at something. Over the years that has been developed and refined and now of course um, 20, 30 years later there's a whole industry built not only on you know, making prototypes but, but final products using additive manufacturing or 3D printing. For the first time, iCalio presentations underwent peer review this year something organizers said improved the overall quality of the conference and should help to attract greater numbers in the future. In addition to the existing conference tracks on laser materials processing, microprocessing, and nanomanufacturing, Baker said he envisioned sessions at future iCalios devoted to bioinstrumentation. Malaria killed more than 627,000 people, most of them children, in 2012, according to the World Health Organization. 
The disease is communicated by mosquitoes, and treated bed nets, anti-malarial drugs, and indoor residual spraying can only do so much to stop its spread. Now add to the list of countermeasures this, a photonic fence under development at Intellectual Ventures in Bellevue, Washington. The device uses LEDs, a retro reflector, and two cameras to triangulate positions of individual mosquitoes, and a laser pulse to shoot them down, according to system architect Macklin Marvitt. The idea is to uh, create a system that can find a mosquito in, a, in, a, in an active region and put a bunch of these active regions around a high value target, a hospital, a clinic, a village, and prevent mosquitoes from going in or coming out. Finding just the right combination of frequency, power, and pulse duration for the laser system has been the job of research scientist Artie Macagon. Close to 10,000 bugs have been zapped, and that's a, that's, that's a figure I'm proud of. Um, and it turns out that you don't need very much, very much power, which is sort of the key driver when it comes to laser cost. Um, in, the, in the short wavelength visible range, you only need a couple of three watts of power to kill a mosquito. Um, in the near IR, uh, our, our testing so far has found that you need just over 10 watts to kill a mosquito, and that's, that's astoundingly low. So we're, we're really excited. We're sort of building system architectures around those really low numbers as we speak. Marvit and Macagon presented their work at iCalio. They said they're now looking at inexpensive commercial laser systems to integrate into their design. Soon they hope to see photonic fences installed in places like sub-Saharan Africa, where malaria poses the greatest threat. Models for American backyards will have to come later. Head over to photonics.com for even more photonics business and research news. Highlights this week include a laser combiner for wearable displays, LEDs for controlling diabetes drugs, and the winners of this year's Berthold Leibinger Foundation Awards. Next week on Light Matters, we'll show you how a camera trick can slow a laser pulse down to a snail's pace and take you inside the week's top photonics news. Until then, you can email us with questions or comments at lightmatters@photonics.com, And don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter for news updates every day. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week.